In the late 50s and early 60s of the last century, expeditions led by the famous archaeologist Kemal Akishev investigated the Bishatir burial mounds, opening all over the world completely new facts about the life and culture of the Saki tribes who inhabited the territory of Kazakhstan thousands of years ago. As it turned out, our ancestors were not pure nomads had a wide knowledge of metallurgy and technologies of bronze processing, with direct descendants of the Andronov population. But only half of the main Bishatir mystery was discovered. During excavations, archaeologists discovered an amazing feature of the Saki burial mounds. Under some of them existed corridors of the underground labyrinths, and it was not possible to find out for what their purpose were. Akishev suggested that they were used for ritual ceremonies. But is it true? I, Roman, Kashev, and myself are starting an independent archaeological investigation. We will try to discover one of the most puzzling mysteries of the Bishatir burial mound. In the search for truth, we decided to start with a thorough study of the diaries of that famous expedition. We go to the Central State Archive of the Republic of Kazakhstan, and among the materials of the archive, we will try to find an answer to the question, which arose many years ago. It is possible that our investigation will be one of the shortest in history. The mystery of the catacombs in a few moments will be revealed. We were lucky. Kemal Akishev conducted a colossal job and all the facts about the Bishartir study were carefully testified in his book. The ancient culture of the Sakis and Usuns of the Ili River Valley. And on the pages of this book, we managed to find the records straight about the moment of detection of the burial mounds underground tunnels. In the northwest corner of the chamber, there was a shallow pit stretched from the northwest to southeast. With its clearing, it was revealed that it continues and goes under the wall of the chamber and then goes out. With further excavation of the pit, at a depth of 1.6 meters from the floor of the chamber, there was a collapse that opened the catacombs of the mound. Studying the works of Akishev, we paid attention to a surprising fact. The monograph is quite meaningful in terms of the findings of all the discoveries which were made and only underground labyrinths were overlooked. What could stop a famous scientist and archaeologist, known for being energetic and professional, to get to the truth? I propose to plunge into the atmosphere of that time to understand the circumstances in which Akishev had to work. Was there a reason why he was never able to get closer to unraveling of the Beshatir catacombs? In 1963, the first group of builders for the construction of hydroelectric power station and the creation of the largest reservoir in the Kazakh SSR arrived at the territory of the modern Kapchagat. Almost 2,000 square kilometers of land were to disappear under the water column. Moreover, burial grounds located in the valley of the Ili River were no exception. In fact, the large-scale union construction could be the reason that Kemal Akishev did not return to the Bishatir mounds to examine thoroughly the underground labyrinths and find their purpose. Nevertheless, Akishev voiced the theory that the catacombs were in some way involved in the ritual of the burial, but he never conducted more detailed findings. We suggested that perhaps other mounds located in Kazakhstan and neighboring states had complex underground labyrinths also, the purpose of which was found during the excavations. For further information, we go to the Institute of Archaeology. Materials of the Institute of Archaeology confirmed our version of the existence of other mounds, 
the design of which also included underground catacombs, but the difficulty, as it turned out, was the Bishatir tombs date back to the 6th to the 5th centuries BC. We can say that these are the only tombs of the Saki kings of the late period, found on the territory of Kazakhstan, and they have a unique structure, uncharacteristic for the young mounds. Restorer of the Museum of Archaeology of RSE, Gilim Ordasi. It goes without saying we have other mounds, models of other mounds. However, they refer to the late times, the later periods of Sakis, 3 to the 4th century BC. In addition, the Bishatir burial grounds date back to the 5th to the 6th century BC. There are different approaches to the construction of the burial. It is therefore hard to find materials for what purpose the Saki dug tunnels. A visit to the Institute of Archaeology was effective enough. Research findings of other underground corridors allowed us to form some interesting and quite realistic versions about the origin of the Bishatir catacombs. Perhaps it is time to go directly to the mounds themselves to check our assumptions on site. Nevertheless, we don't stop searching for new information to assist in the investigation. We invited a team of experts, those who are familiar enough with the culture of the Saki tribes, and can reveal to us the interesting details of a bygone era. This is the Deputy Director on Science of the State Historical and Cultural and Natural Museum Reserve, Tamgali. Boris Zheleznikov, Chief Scientist of the Institute of Archaeology of the Ministry of Education and Science of the Republic of Kazakhstan, Ornanvai Nerzhanov. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Hello, come in please. Before talking about the underground catacombs of Bishatir, I would like to start with a topic about the Sakis themselves. It is understandable that we are talking about the Bishatir mounds in the context of the Saki culture, because it is one of the largest, one of the earliest Jitisu burials. Moreover, the fact that we see such a majestic mound on the banks of the Ili River, it is not accidental, because this is where the Saki's royal family had settled. We are here. It's very difficult to express the power and majesty of Bishatir. Perhaps only who was here could experience the atmosphere of this land. Thousands of years ago, our ancestors found a place for eternal rest of their kings. Modern generation would envy Saki's attitude to the deceased. Remote areas were selected for burial and they were near rivers and protected reliably by mountains. Ili Valley on its landscape is almost perfect, as evidenced by numerous burial mounds on the left and right banks of the river. It is a pity that we will not see this place the way it met the team of the famous archaeologists, but he left a rather detailed description of the open picture before their eyes. Beshatir Cemetery stretches from the north to the south for two kilometers, from west to east for one kilometer. It consists of 31 mounds. 21 of the mounds were stone floors, and 10 with mounds of rubble and earth. There is no special system in the location of burial mounds, but there are two more or less compact groups, northern and southern. By the size of mounds, they can be divided into three categories. Large diameters range from 45 to 105 meters and a height range from 6 to 17 meters. Medium mounds 25 to 38 and 5 to 6 meters respectively and small mounds 6 to 18 and 1 to 2 meters. In general there is certain logic in the mounds disposition. We hope that according to the results of an independent investigation one of our assumptions will get a reasonable explanation and proof. Well, it's time to check the version. Let us start from the beginning. 
This version of the purpose of underground catacombs was born when visiting the Institute of Archaeology. We were told that almost all the mounds were plundered by Saki contemporaries, as there is excellent knowledge of mounds construction and burial technologies. Stealing is dangerous in our time, but for the Saki tribes, grave desecration was one of the most terrible crimes. There is abundant evidence of the Greek chroniclers who wrote that Sakis did not immediately show some aggressive nature. Only when the enemy tribes began to destroy the graves of ancestors, the royal ancestors of Sakis, Sakis showed much more armed activity. They did not think people were dead gone to another world, so all of these facilities were built for life in another world. If you touch my ancestors, then you won't live. This Saki's funeral ceremony celebrated the life of the existing world. We suppose that robbers, in an effort to get to the treasure and save their lives, try to destroy mounds imperceptibly. At a considerable distance from the mounds, they made a tunnel under the ground and got to the burial chambers. This version is the fact that all the detected tunnels were located directly below the largest mounds, belonging to members of high nobility, and therefore stored their real value in the depths. What is the point to open each mound, if one hole can enrich both robbers and their descendants? The first view of researchers, especially Kemal Akishev, is a robbery hole. Akishev told me that at that time there were probably Bugrovshik tribes, people who were involved in the looting of burial mounds. Then, after the excavation of the third and the sixth Bishatir mounds, there were other opinions. These underground passages were built before the passing of the individual because the inputs and outputs were under the foundation. They all would have collapsed. Unfortunately, the version of the predatory nature of the origin of underground tunnels was not confirmed. Thieves didn't bother with the challenging job and acted quite openly, apparently without special tools, for laying invisible catacombs. This fact only warms up our interest, and we turn to the second version. Studying materials at the Institute of Archaeology, we found reports about excavations of the Alexandropol Mound. There was a burial which occurred twice, first by all the laws, and then, after a while, an underground corridor was dug through which the second deceased body was brought. Can this version be actual in this case? To answer this question, let us understand the structure of the mounds themselves. The first Bishatir mound was excavated in 1961. Archaeologists have traced the mound structure. The upper layer represented the paving stones. The middle, a mixture of earth and rubble. The bottom, of broken stone. The thickness of each layer ranged from 1 to 13 meters. Directly below me, there is a hidden royal tomb. At that time, it's a complex wooden structure of the Tian Shan spruce logs. It consists of three parts, a corridor, a vestibular building, and burial chamber. By modern standards, the building is quite modest in size. But the ceiling height is admirable, an average of about four to five meters. The burial chamber has the shape of an irregular square and oriented to the cardinal points with a little deviation. The walls of the chamber built of Tian Shan spruce logs laid on top of each other in 16 rows. In his book, Akishev doesn't indicate any damage or holes in the floor of the main room. Honestly, 
it is doubtful that our ancestors were able to bring the second deceased body and later so carefully conceal their actions. In general, when there were catacomb burials, people in that time buried again near the burial place because the camera was shut with the field stone. This is the catacomb burials method. And here, in our case, Bishatir Saki Mounds, it's not a catacomb burial, there aren't such kind of graves. I looked through all the drawings and found nothing. From this version, unfortunately, too, we will have to give up. We do not stop searching for an answer and look at another idea. On another purpose of catacombs, Greek writer Elian left quite curious evidence. He writes about the Saki's wedding ceremony, during which the young man could marry a girl if he overcomes her in a duel. In addition, to fight this kind of duel, Saki went into the underground temples. It's probably the same ones that are open in the mounds of the Seven Rivers. Thus, widespread Saki myth is confirmed, considering death is the beginning of a new life, which ritual conception takes place in a special location on the border worlds. In our view, this assumption sounds the least likely, especially taking into consideration the fact that the tunnels were not spacious. Average width was 80 centimeters and the height was barely one and a half meters. However, the version exists and should be checked. Dimensions conformed loneliness. Perhaps there really was the little space for a struggle. However, the fight could also be figurative, and I think that the mound was made in a similar way that there at some point you could make some kind of connection with the buried souls. Nevertheless, to accomplish any deep rituals for not taking the food and the lack of sunlight, which also contribute to a particular mood of a young man, there were all conditions. It is difficult to imagine that in such a narrow space two adults could fight, especially paying attention to the fact that the arch of the tunnels was semicircular, which further reduces the space. However, the sizes of the tunnels, it's not a reason to give up on the version. Check further. We decided to expand the area of our independent investigation and to consider in the context of the new version not only the mounds and tunnels, but the other objects of the architectural ensemble of the Bishatir burial ground. These are Mingirs. They are not in any way called independent monuments that have arisen independently of mounds. They certainly are an important part of the overall picture, complementing the main object. There are 94 Mingir fences near the big mound located around the mound like a curl, with the beginning of a spiral on the east side of the mound and behind the stone mound at 30 meters. And the end of this spiral finishes in the south, at a distance of 50 meters. Speaking of Bishatir Saki mounds, one can't say that these are complex architectural structures. This is not just an embarkment mound. It is not just a tomb. These are 94 Mingir fences around. These are Mingirs at a certain distance. Each fence meant the border between the two worlds. At this time, we are talking about the underground passages it is just a part of the culture. It is only a part of the architectural structure. Weren't these Mingir fences an eternal reminding that we should not violate the sacred boundaries of the Saki tribes? That anyone who is there should refrain from any desecration of the royal tombs? Especially because in Scythian mythology, the Geros sacred land existed, which was revered as a sacred place and protected from any intrusion. The father of the history, Gerardo, wrote that Sakis, they're the same Asian Scythians. Geros, there were many in the history of Kazakhstan. They're located in the open air in front of the mountains. The same, 
Novo Alexeyev Mounds, Burundai cemeteries, look, mountains are close. Then the Korpitai necropolis in central Kazakhstan, Saki's huge necropolis, Berkarik burial, in the Jambul region, also in the foothill zone. Open land, gorges begin, mountains and open space. It is a sacred place. From there, the sacred places are, it is Jeros. Therefore, this mythology necessarily existed at Saki's. In addition, we found a different interpretation of the Ilian words. If a man wants to marry a girl, he is fighting with her. Whoever wins, he or she commands and dominates. The defeated complies. Both are eager to win, but not to the death of the enemy. The underground passages are not mentioned. I think that version is unconfirmed. By the way, a different translation of the works of Elian gave us a surprise. The reference to the underground labyrinth was there, but it sounded in a fundamentally different way. In the grief, Saki went to the dark rooms which were located underground. What if the purpose of the tunnels is in a farewell to the dead, in privacy, in moments of grief? This version becomes more and more likely, especially because, in his book, Akishev, mentions the fact that in the underground catacombs the bones of small animals and traces of fire were found and it may provide evidence of certain rituals what and why burial mounds were erected according to akashev from three to seven layers probably every year in commemoration of the dead all the saki tribes that have taken part in this ceremony also have been involved in the process of completion of the mound. It became more and more magnificent. Now let's imagine how people act who think that the burial place is the holy land and protect it from any outside intrusion. Every day the builders have come to the graves of the dead and disturbed their peace with building work. Every day the mound over the burial chamber was shaken with more and more layers of crushed stones, earth and rubble. We think that such disturbance Saki compensated using ritual ceremonies taking place in the underground tunnels. In the immediate vicinity of the deceased, the bones of small animals and traces of fire is the best evidence. Ninety-four fences, mengers surrounded Beshatir mounds. There were funeral pyres. About 100 lights surrounded a large mound every year when all the people who came to the wake remembered and prepared a memorial funeral feast. It is possible that the commemoration took place in the catacombs. In the light of our findings, the version of the ritual purpose of underground catacombs remains the most likely of all verified by an independent archaeological investigation. Is it true? It is difficult to answer. Therefore, we decided to suspend the search for truth to the discovery of new facts about the culture and traditions of the Saki tribes. One thing is clear. To our days, Saki tribes, one of the most mysterious pages of our history, they terrified the neighbors and honored their tradition. Each extracted grain of knowledge is truly priceless, and the study of their culture and worldview will yet reveal to us the amazing secrets of our ancestors.